Now, strap in for this one. This new car design is properly genius. So let's unpack it. Formula One unveiled a full-size version of the new car recently, and it looks radically different to the current cars. Now, a lot of this is about improving the looks of the cars, but also, thankfully, a lot of it is about improving racing. But despite the crazy livery, the thing that caught my eye was the rear wing. We have never seen anything like this before. Normally rear wings are boxy rather than curved like this, and for good reason. So is this new look just an aesthetic change, or to do with actually improving overtaking? Well, as it turns out, the reasoning is genius. The entire philosophy of this new car is about reducing dirty air, the major factor that makes it incredibly hard to overtake. And on the current car, the hundreds of complex aero surfaces create lots of downforce but with the byproduct of incredibly dirty air and with this when driving behind another car your wings no longer work at the maximum efficiency and you have to take different lines and work your tires harder to keep up the wind tunnel research says you can lose as much as 35 percent of your downforce when following a car within three car lengths and if you close that up to just one car length, you can lose as much as 57% of your downforce. When I've raced high speed and high downforce cars before, this is incredibly frustrating. As soon as you follow another car, you get lots and lots of understeer and it makes it very difficult to overtake. So let's look at the current rear wings. They have two wing elements that are fairly uniform across the length. Then they have end plates that are typically square to essentially fence off the end of the wing. This is so the air is forced to follow the contour of the wing. The wings work by forcing this air upwards, which in turn forces the car downwards. But the profile of the wing also generates downforce, and we've covered this before, but they essentially create a high pressure area on top of the wing and a low pressure one below. But imagine if we remove the end planes, the high pressure air would be able to spill over the side of the wing, reducing this effect. So how can the new rules have removed these elements? And are the wings much less efficient now? In a nutshell, yes. That is part of the philosophy of this car. Essentially, the rear wing forms a smaller part of the overall downforce of the car. So Formula One made a load of changes to combat this dirty air problem. Things like simplifying the front wing, using small winglets over the wheels to manage the tire wake, as well as bringing back wheel covers. But the clever bit about this car is how the downforce is produced. Put simply, overbody downforce, so the wings and the body of the car is less efficient and creates more dirty air. So Formula One have leaned into underbody downforce. It's more efficient and is far less harmful to the car behind. The underbody downforce is mainly the floor of the car, which takes a new role in this car. It actually actually creates the large majority of the car's downforce by using a clever ground effect system. It has these massive tunnels that run the length of the car. They can accelerate huge amounts of air which creates massive suction under the floor. So this means that Formula One can remove the complex aero surfaces, things like the barge boards, the little strakes all over the car, as well as simplifying the wings without losing too much downforce on the whole. And this explains the removal of the end plates as they are one of the worst culprits for dirty air. Whilst they improve the efficiency of the wings on the current cars, the sharp edges create huge vortices. This happens as the high pressure on the wing flows out into the open air and the two streams mix. Now at this point we have high pressure air mixing with air at atmospheric pressure and as they mix they create these vortices. At this point of the car these vortices are very much a bad thing and the teams try to reduce them as much as possible as they create a lot of drag. But ultimately they are a natural side effect of having wings and the additional downforce outweighs the drag when considering speed over a lap but they also really hurt the car behind. This swirling air will disrupt the flow over the car that's following. So removing them reduces some downforce, but also dramatically reduces the dirty air, which is a trade-off that makes sense for better racing. But that doesn't entirely explain this strange curved shape. For the current breed of cars, a lot of the components directing the airflow, like the barge boards, aren't actually there to create downforce. They are there to push the turbulent, harmful air, like the messy flow that spills off the wheels, outwards away from the rear of the car, essentially stopping the rear of the car being hurt by its own dirty air. Now to combat this, the teams use vortices that seal off the floor and push the wake outwards. This protects the car, but really hurts the cars following behind. Of course, these new cars will still produce some dirty air as it is moving through the air. So this clever new design is there to manage that as much as possible. Now, this is the really clever bit. 
the new rear wing does exactly the opposite. This curve forces the air to the center of the car, just behind the diffuser. But why does it do this? Well, remember this new floor that accelerates air to create downforce. This air will exit the diffuser and is expanded upwards and taking the overbody airflow with it. So that means the diffuser is used to push the dirty air up and over the car behind, literally lifting the dirty air out the way so the car behind is able to follow closer. That's actually why this new lower wing element is here. It creates a low pressure area just above the diffuser that sucks more air through the diffuser and increases this effect. And what's brilliant is that the wind tunnel tests say the dirty air has been massively reduced, taking the downforce loss from a 57% to only 18%, meaning the cars can follow closer for longer. You should watch this video where I explain how F1 engineers learned to use these vortices to their advantage, leading to the incredible cars that we have now. Thanks very much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. You can check them out with the link in the description. Thanks very much for watching. Check out these videos which I think you'll love and I'll catch you in the next one.